Hello, and welcome to lecture number 39. Uh, today we'll be talking about treating bipolar disorder with mood stabilizers and other alternatives. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, what bipolar disorder is and some of uh, the information about it and its treatment with a drug called lithium. Uh, today we're going to talk about other uh, treatment alternatives. We'll start off by talking about anticonvulsant medications for bipolar disorder. Uh, after that, we'll talk about antipsychotics and then finish up with uh, a couple of other uh, issues uh, in this area. So we'll start off with an introduction and then talk about some specific anticonvulsant medications used in this area and their efficacy. And then we'll move on to talk about some other drugs. But originally, these drugs we'll talk about were developed as anticonvulsants or treatment for seizure disorders. Some of these are important analgesics, which we talked about previously. In particular, gabapentin is one that is used um, as a non-opioid analgesic. Uh, they can be used in bipolar disorder. Uh, and certainly can be used to treat relapse to substance abuse. Uh, they're often used as a detoxification agent for alcohol withdrawal to treat those withdrawal symptoms. They can also be used to treat behavioral discontrol, uh, aggressive behaviors uh, associated with post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar disorder, and child and adolescent behavioral discontrol. Talking about usually conduct disorders, um, that sort of thing. So these drugs have a number of uses. Uh, again, developed as anticonvulsants, but they have an important uh, role in other areas as well. So uh, the first issue we want to talk about is they do have a lot of overlap with some of the newer atypical antipsychotics. Um, drugs in both of these groups can be used to treat bipolar disorder. Um, they're both used to treat aggression and violent behaviors in a variety of situations, particular PTSD and bipolar disorder. Uh, drugs of both groups have affective actions that may be beneficial, that is, they may benefit uh, people's mood. And finally, all of these are teratogens, and so it's important for uh, women who are considering pregnancy, who are, are pregnant, to talk with their doctor about whether or not these drugs are appropriate. We'll start with uh, Tegretol and Trileptol, which are two versions of the same uh, drug, carbamazepine. They seem to be as effective as lithium in preventing man manic occurrence. Um, some patients who don't respond to one or the other will actually respond to both used in combination, and we talked about that in the previous lecture, that oftentimes uh, adding lithium to one of these drugs will make it more effective. Uh, there is some impairment of cognitive function and also risk for life-threatening dermatological conditions in Asian populations, so it probably should not be used in those groups. Uh, do have significant drug interactions, and that's always something to talk with your doctor about. Uh, there are also several apps available for you to check for drug interactions as well, and always talk to your doctor or pharmacist about what drug you're taking. Um, Trileptol, or the oxcarbazepine, um, seems to have fewer drug interactions and does, uh, is also superior to placebo in the treatment of acute mania. So it may be a better drug of choice because of its lower interactions uh, with other drugs. A valproic acid or Depakote uh, is uh, an older drug but has new extended release formulations uh, so that it can be taken daily rather than uh, multiple times a day. It's approved for use in bipolar disorder, epilepsy, and for treating migraine headaches has several mechanisms of action, including being a GABA agonist, uh, and, which of course causes suppression of neural firing. Seems to be effective for treatment of acute mania, schizoaffective disorder, and rapid cycling bipolar disorder, which is oftentimes very difficult to treat. Uh, side effects include um, gastrointestinal ups upset, some sedation, people may also get a hand tremor and can be associated with hair loss. These are obviously uh, side effects that uh, will, can be troublesome to people. And so it's something to monitor uh, in patients. There are a couple of black box warnings on this particular drug. The first is it can be hepatotoxic. That is, it can cause damage to the liver. So individuals on this drug should certainly either limit or completely eliminate alcohol altogether and other hepatotoxic, hepatotoxic um, drugs such as um, Tylenol. Um, there is also a risk for pancreatitis. Uh, with this particular drug, again, uh, reducing or eliminating alcohol intake uh, can be effective in treating that as well. Uh, so Lamictrogene, or Lamictal, uh, has been approved and apparently highly effective in long-term maintenance of bipolar 1 disorder. Uh, its mechanism of action is a blockade of voltage-gated uh, voltage sodium channels, 
That, of course, will reduce action potentials and reduce uh, neural firing. It's rapidly absorbed. Its peak plasma concentration is uh, in one to five hours and has about a 26-hour half-life, so we'll reach steady state in about six days. Uh, what's interesting about this is it can actually improve cognitive functioning in patients, and if a patient is having difficulty with their cognitive functioning because of their bipolar disorder, this may be a good drug of choice because it makes it more likely that they will actually stay on this particular drug. Um, gabapentin and pregabalin, or Lyrica, which is easier to say, are both drugs uh, that are effective in treating neuropathic pain. They're not as effective in treating bipolar disorder, so probably not uh, useful in this particular area. They do have great pharmacokinetic profiles, have few drug interactions. Um, Lyrica is a related but more potent version of gabapentin, and so it is uh, more useful or certainly a more powerful version of dealing with that neuropathic pain. And so if you're somebody who suffers from peripheral neuropathy, that may be a drug for you to think about. Uh, Topamax uh, is not supported as treatment for bipolar disorder. It's primarily used to prevent relapse to drinking and treating alcoholics. It appears to be a GABA agonist. However, it can cause serious cognitive disruption, in particular aphasia, which is difficulty in word finding. So aphasias are generally um, referred to as a class of language disorders. In this particular case, uh, difficulty finding so that can be very disruptive for individuals. So, we're going on here. Anyway, um, all second-generation antipsychotics are approved for treating mania and bipolar disorder. So we're going to talk now about some of these atypical antipsychotics and their efficacy. Uh, Risperdone is effective in maintaining remission from symptoms. Uh, olanzapine is particularly effective for bipolar depression. Um, Unfortunately, movement disorders are more likely to be a side effect of antipsychotics in bipolar disorder patients, and so that should be monitored very closely. Uh, finally, there is a new drug called Symbiax, which uh, is a combination of olanzapine and fluoxetine, uh, which is an antidepressant. Uh, its efficacy has been established in two eight-week trials in bipolar one and depressed patients, uh, and is... Um, better than uh, lonzapine monotherapy and placebo. Um, those are probably manufacturer trials, so take with a grain of salt, but it's certainly something cons to consider if it's something you are uh, struggling with. So this may be a combination drug uh, for some people. So it's something to consider or talk to your doctor about. So the last couple areas I wanna talk about are uh, interesting uh, and important tidbits. The first is about uh, omega-3 fatty acids for bipolar disorders. What's interesting is we see a lower incidence of bipolar disorders in countries with high fish intake. And obviously there are a number of confounding factors, but it's an important uh, note. And in this study, uh, 30 patients were followed for four months um, in taking omega-3 fatty acids, and uh, the results were pretty impressive, regardless of whether patients were or were not taking other bipolar medications. And so adding an omega-3 fatty acid to your um, sort of diet is pretty easy. Um, you want to find a, a good quality omega-3 fatty acid um, for you to take. Um, you might have to shop around a little bit. Um, sometimes they can uh, cause gastric upset, et cetera, but this is a, an easy thing to add to your diet. We do know that omega-3s have been associated with neural health. The evidence overall is mixed, but there's other health benefits to omega-3s uh, in addition to the um, potential for treating uh, both depression and bipolar disorder. So it's certainly worth a shot. I, I mean, I certainly don't have any investment in omega-3 fatty acids other than I think they're a good choice and certainly not going to hurt anyone. Uh, and there is evidence uh, that they can do things like um, reduce some cholesterol levels and other um, blood values. So it's, it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, certainly increasing uh, your fish intake, uh, obviously not fried fish. Um, you want probably um, to intake, uh, increase your intake of certain fish. Oftentimes the best omega-3 fish uh, is pretty oily, and so oftentimes people find it easier just to, to take those omega-3 pills. But something worth considering, uh, certainly. Finally, um, psychotherapy and psychosocial treatments are an important uh, part of treating bipolar disorder. 
Patients require social support via friends, family, and peers. Group psychotherapy can be very helpful in managing the disease and talking with other people in the same um, areas. And it's really critical. Bipolar disorder patients oftentimes need assistance for drug compliance and for recognizing side effects and recognizing perhaps when their symptoms have returned. Not everyone's as attuned to themselves as possible, particularly things like tremors, uh, that sort of thing, or forgetfulness. Oftentimes we don't know that we're being forgetful. And so having somebody around to provide that social assistance is particularly important. And so uh, I think that's something to keep in mind. All right, well, that wraps up our discussion of bipolar disorder. Um, you want to uh, be mindful, uh, talk with your doctor uh, about any of these treatments uh, and whether or not they're um, something you should consider.